Hey everybody, this is Jason Walbrink with Banna Properties and today I wanted to make a little video to talk about 10 things that you can do with vacant land. Now, uh, in preparation for this video, I had to reduce it because there are quite a few more things that you could do. But today we're just gonna cover 10 things that you can do with any type of vacant land. Now, obviously certain types of property uh, will be more suited for these uses than others. Uh, but it will give you the general idea and start thinking about it. So the first thing that you could do potentially with a piece of vacant land um, that you buy or own would be that you could live on your land. Uh, who doesn't want to own a piece of property that they can live on, uh, build a house on? I've got a picture here of a tree house, um, probably on a steep hillside it looks like that's built. So all different types of property you can build on. There's another one in the desert, um, nice little cabin in the woods. and. Uh, who wouldn't want to have a piece of property that they own and that they could potentially live on outside of the hustle and bustle of the city? Uh, so great option uh, for rural land, vacant land, or even a lot that you might buy um, in the suburbs. Another thing that's coming, becoming very popular um, lately is homesteading. So it's interesting that most of the United States uh, was established by the homesteading movements in the 1800s um, and homesteaders were often called that because they would go and they would stake their claim uh, on their 40 acres of property under the, uh, the US government's Homestead Act. But nowadays people are coming back to those roots. Um, many times people want to have uh, some chickens, they want to live uh, away from things, they want to uh, raise some food or some animals um, and raise their family in that environment. So homesteading would be a great option um, that you could do with a piece of vacant land. You would definitely need at least a, uh, a few acres to do this successfully. Probably are not gonna be able to homestead on a quarter acre lot in the city. Um, but if you get out, out to the outsides of the city and you were to buy two, three, five, ten 10 acres, um, you could definitely create a nice homestead there. And that leads me into the third thing, which is farming. Now there's a lot of farmland established in the US, um, like this picture here on the bottom left, um, where we see s farming that's uh, mechanized, um, that's mechanical and often with different types of fertilizer. And there are even huge companies that have invested in, own and control giant portions of farmland in the US. They're producing food, uh, but maybe you have a different perspective. Maybe you would like to produce organic produce without all the chemicals and the fertilizers and the pesticides that uh, little by little are destroying our bodies. Um, owning a piece of land, you could potentially create a wonderful organic farming operation like we see in the picture above. Um, this is definitely an option you can do. And what's interesting is there are even places in the desert where there are organic farms through aquaphonic um, farming, um, through greenhouse farming, different irrigation techniques, um, even in areas of Texas, Arizona, um, and Nevada, there are farms that are in the desert and they have wells and pivot irrigation systems that uh, basically produce um, and irrigate for those farms. So there are many things you could do in farming and farming doesn't have to be thousands of acres in this huge operation. Remember that people have been farming for thousands upon thousands of years oftentimes with small patches that provided for their families and then they sold in their local communities. And there's a huge movement in the US right now with farmer markets. So um, you could produce organic produce and sell them at your local farmer's market and potentially even make a living doing that. Uh, the fourth thing that we can do on a piece of vacant land that we own is camping. And who doesn't want to sing Kumbaya around the campfire on occasion? Um, just seeing this picture on top here, um, with that view, it makes me want to go get out my, my tent and clean it up and air it out and go uh, camp with my family. Um, some great memories uh, can be formed camping, enjoying time in the, outside, in the outdoors, um, getting away from cell phone service and artificial lights and the noise and the pollution um, of city life and slowing down a bit. Another thing that's uh, often done on land that you own is hunting. Uh, many people like to shoot and hunt and enjoy the outdoors. Um, sportsmen, um, 
people that would like to spend time bonding with their children, uh, like this father here with his son. Uh, I know that personally I have enjoyed many times hunting with my father when I was a boy, and those are great memories uh, that can be formed for a lifetime. So many properties have wild game in different areas. Now obviously, even though you own the land, you still need to see the hunting laws in that state and follow those. Um, but owning a piece of property offers a perfect opportunity to bond, uh, to build memories, to enjoy the outdoors and hunting in a responsible way. Another thing is rest. Uh, with the craziness of life, uh, the American pace of life, oftentimes the American dream um, actually can become a nightmare because we just work nonstop. So having a piece of land that you can get away to on the weekends or a couple of weeks a year or a day here and there to just simply rest, to put up your hammock, uh, open up that camp chair, enjoy the silence, enjoy the views, whether it's near water, near mountains, whether you like desert or woodlands, there are all types of properties in the U.S. that you can rest on, enjoy a good book, and disconnect. Another thing that many people like to do uh, with property that they own is bird watching and animal watching. Um, this is a great way to connect with nature. It goes very well with the previous uh, few things that we mentioned. Outdoors activities like camping and, and resting and even hunting is just being out there and enjoying nature. Some people will even buy a larger piece of property and use it as a sort of a natural preserve, put out uh, food and feeders, uh, bird feeders and such for animals in order to uh, observe those animals and just enjoy seeing animals in nature. It's, it's, it's a very beautiful thing uh, to observe. Uh, a potential way you could actually even make money off land that you own is if the area um, is flat or it's in a high place that has good wind currents, you could potentially create a wind farm. So there are all kinds of wind farms with um, the current legislation that's in place in the United States, there's a big push for green ed energy. Wind is a type of green energy, it's renewable. And these wind farms are popping up all over the 50 states. So if your property is located in the right place, um, you could create a wind farm. Some people in their homesteads actually put up their own windmill to generate electricity for their house, their off-grid house. Uh, the ones that we see here are commercial wind farms and a company will actually pay you yearly lease for your property in order to build that windmill on your property or those windmills and it creates a cash flow um, of earnings for you to live off of. Another thing is you could develop your property for a commercial purpose. Um, you could make a commercial storage lot or a self-serve mini storage. Uh, these are all over the United States, especially in areas around cities or, or towns that have colleges. A lot of college students like to use them. Uh, they don't cost a whole lot to build um, and, and with some management they can produce quite a bit of income. You could also put up a shop or a store depending on the location of your property. And the final thing of the 10 things that you could do with vacant land is you can simply buy it to invest in your future. So many people are buying land right now um, there's actually a huge boom on land in the United States because people think, I want to own something solid. The great thing about investing is land is it's a piece of property that you will own and that will be there for the future. You do, um, all, the only thing you have to do is pay a little bit of property taxes every year and it's yours. No one's going to take it away from you. You can leave it as an inheritance to your children and your children's children. And the famous quote by Mark Twain was, buy land. They aren't making any more of it. So it's very interesting. Oftentimes we are buying things uh, that slowly deteriorate like a vehicle or something of that sort. Uh, but land is something that has a lot of potential. As we saw in the previous nine ideas, you could even potentially make your land produce or develop it. Um, maybe you buy land in the path of growth in areas that are developing where businesses are coming in. If you do a little research um, and you're aware of these growth areas, and you're in the path of growth, it could be potentially a very profitable investment. Another thing is land banking is just holding on to it for the future as land values slowly increase in most places in the United States um, over the years and over the decades, and in the future, sell it for more. Or like I mentioned before, 
Um, you could give it as an inheritance to your children. And in the worst of all cases, you own a piece of property that you can do recreation on, you can visit, you can build on, you can do whatever you want with it. So those are 10 ideas of things that can be done with vacant land. And the question I have for you is, uh, do you own your own land? All right, this is Jason with Banna Properties. Thank you for watching this video.